Today we're looking at angle relationships and similar triangles. Uh, we've got a few objectives there on the left side. Uh, and then an important property here, uh, that vertical angles have equal measures. So vertical angles happen when we have uh, just any two lines that will intersect, and the angles that are on opposite sides, they are the vertical angles. So like this angle M here, and this angle here uh, from QMR. So those are vertical angles. And then these two angles here with the red arcs are also vertical. And you can tell, or should be able to tell by looking, that those vertical angles that are straight across from each other and those intersecting lines are equal in measure. So that's an important property that we use when working with triangles and other uh, just angle relationships. Here's another important uh, set of information here regarding parallel, parallel lines that are intersected by a transversal. So we have our two parallel lines here, and then this is what we call a transversal, a line that intersects two other ones. And the, that forms four angles at each uh, intersection between the parallel lines and the transversal. Now, we go through all of our different properties here about alternate interior angles, our alternate exterior angles, and all of this stuff. One thing that you can use in order to kind of summarize this for you is that there are really only two different angle measures in this situation. We will have vertical angles at 1 and 4 and 2 and 3. 1 and 4 being the obtuse angles, 2 and 3 being the acute. Well, these angles over here also again have an acute and an obtuse angle, assuming that the transversal isn't perpendicular to the parallel lines, and in that case there's, they're all 90 degrees. But otherwise, the acute angles, all four of them, are all congruent. The obtuse angles, all four of them, are all congruent. So I can pretty quickly say, well, 1, 4, 5, and 8 are congruent. 2, 3, 6, and 7 are congruent. Um, besides that, the obtuse and acute angles, you can see, form a straight angle. So besides the acute angles all being equal and the obtuse angles all being equal, um, the obtuse angle is supplementary to the acute angle and vice versa, they're supplements of each other. So we have all these other properties. The alternate interior angles are equal in measure. Sure, that's true. And again, you get one pair that's obtuse with four and five, and then three and six are also alternate interior angles. They're also equal in measure. Alternate exterior angles are equal in measure. And yes, that's true. Again, notice there are the two obtuse angles, one and eight here. And then they mention 2 and 7, again, the alternate exterior that are acute. Again, so it's all um, nice to have there, but again, it's really just uh, the acute angles are all congruent and the obtuse angles are all congruent. Um, we also have interior angles on the same side of the transversal. They add up to 180. So I mentioned the acute and obtuse angles, they're all um, supplementary. And then corresponding angles, so like 2 and 6, those are... Uh, equal measure or congruent. Um, and again, notice those are the acute angles, and so again, uh, just goes along with uh, uh, what I had summarized before. So we use that information in a problem like this one to find the measures of angles 1, 2, 3, and 4 in this figure. And again, I know that um, 2 and 3 will be supplementary, 1 and 3 will be congruent to each other. Uh, 4 is an acute angle, so 1, 3, and 4 will all be equal. Um, and again, looking at my diagram here, angle 4, angle 1, they're equal to each other. They're alternate exterior angles. They're both acute. Um, and so we really just set those two uh, expressions equal to each other. 3x plus 2 equals 5x minus 40. So 3 x plus 2 equals 5 x minus 40. Again, this is one way that we set this up, is we might set these expressions equal to each other. Again, the only other way this really happens is we add these together and we get 180. Of course, that would be if we had an expression for the measure of angle 2. Um, in this case, I would subtract 3 x from both sides of the equation. So 2 equals 2 x minus 40, and then I would add the 40 to both sides. I'm just going to put 42 over here and 2 x here. Divide by 2 gives me uh, x equals 21. Now, that does not answer the question. They're asking about the measures of angles 1, 2, and 3. I have to plug the 21 into my expression here. 
So I plug the 21 in here, and so I'd have 3 times 21 plus 2. So I get 63 plus 2, so that angle is 65 degrees. So angle 1 is 65 degrees. That's the same as angle 3. Oop, I'm saying angle 3, and I wanted to write angle 3, so that's 65 degrees. Um, angle 4, again, is the same, so that's also 65 degrees. And again, I know that angle 2 is supplementary to the 65 degrees because they form a straight angle. So I can just take the 65 away from 180 to get 115. So again, that's 180 minus the 65, or 65 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180, however you want to figure that. Uh, but we end up with 115 degrees, and again, that should make sense because these two need to be supplementary. They form a straight angle. Here's an uh, image describing why the angle sum of a triangle property works the way that it does. So showing that if you have a triangle and you rip the three corners apart, then put them back together, they do form a straight angle here. Um, so again, uh, the angle sum of a triangle property saying that the sum of the measures of the angles of any triangle is 180 degrees. So we'll go ahead and use that next. So in this case we have a triangle labeled with the 48 degrees, the 61 degrees, and x. Um, they want us to find the measure of the third angle, x. So in this case, finding x and finding the third angle measure will be the same thing since the third angle is x. So we start just by writing an equation that says x plus 48 plus 61 equals 180. Uh, we just simplify the left-hand side, x plus 109 equals 180. Subtract the 109 from both sides, so I'll just... Uh, Again, figure that's going to be 71. So x is 71, this angle measures 71 degrees, and that's all we're looking at there. Uh, here are some different types of triangles. So we have acute triangles, where all of the angles are acute. Right triangle has exactly one right angle. Of course, that's the only, you can't have two, wouldn't work. And then an obtuse triangle has an obtuse angle. Uh, the other two would have to be acute, so an obtuse angle and um, two acute angles. Now, you can also have an equilateral triangle where all the sides are equal. Now, just uh, uh, by the way, these three angles would all be 60 degrees because if all the sides are equal, so are the angles. 60, 60, 60 makes 180. Uh, an isosceles triangle, two of the sides are equal. That means two of the angles are equal as well. And then a scalene triangle, none of the sides are equal. So uh, being able to classify triangles is what we want to be able to do with the ocean. So here we have some examples, and it's telling us to classify it as acute, right, or obtuse, and as equilateral, isosceles, or scalene. So example, or problem 25 here, all three sides are different, has a right angle, so that is a right scalene triangle. Uh, 27, they're showing us that the sides are equal, and this time they decided to show us with actual numbers rather than just uh, the marks, like these. And they even throw in there that these are 60 degrees. So that is an equilateral triangle. Um, equilateral triangles are all acute, so I suppose acute and equilateral. Um, in 29, they show us that this is a 3, 4, and a 5, So and this is 90 degrees, so a really different way of doing this. Uh, but that would be right scalene. And then in 31, we have a right angle, but these two are the same, so that's right isosceles. Uh, of course, we didn't cover all the different combinations, but hopefully you have an idea of how that works. All right, so now similar triangles. For triangles to be similar, then corresponding angles have the same measure. Okay, so corresponding angles would be equal. Corresponding sides have to be proportional, so the ratios of their sides must be equal. Um, so in this uh, these two triangles here, they tell us ABC and MP are similar. They want us to find the measures of angles B and C. So B and C being down here. So the two triangles are uh, oriented the same. It's like P corresponds to C and M corresponds to B. So since it tells us these triangles are similar, then I know the measure of angle B is 31 degrees. The measure of angle C is 104 degrees. So again, that's all 
kind of part of the fact that corresponding angles have to have the same measure. Uh, here's another one where uh, triangle ABC and DEF are similar. They want us to find the lengths of the unknown sides, so we're missing these two sides. Now there are different ways to set up these proportions. Um, of course I do them the way that I think makes most sense. I'm going to just call this side X and this side Y just so I can uh, have that shorthand. I like to put the side that I am trying to find um, on top. So like I would do an X over, and I like to keep those pieces of the same triangle together. So I would do X over 8 and set that equal to. Now what I need is the corresponding side on the other triangle. So AB, notice how the letters line up to AB corresponds to DF. So this would be 24, and then corresponding to DE is AC. So 24 over 16. Now these do reduce down nicely. Um, it won't always work that way. Typically what you'll do is just, uh, you can cross multiply. I'm not a huge fan. All I would do is multiply both sides of the equation by 8. Um, again, yes, you could cross multiply and then divide by the 16. Um, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, 8 over 16 would be a half. 24 divided by 2 would be 12. So it looks like x equals 12 there. And then I would go through the same process really for the y. So I would do y over 8. Again, I like to put the side that I'm solving for on top, uh, and specifically on top of the piece from its own triangle. To me, that makes uh, the most sense. The y corresponds to 32. The 8 still corresponds to the 16. So y over 8 would equal 32 over 16. And again, yes, you could cross multiply and divide. I'm not a huge fan. Uh, it's not really necessary here where we've got the y on top already. And then, of course, on this side, the 8s cancel out. Uh, over here, the 8 over 16. Again, this is a half. Again, 8 over 16 is a half. Of course, I could reduce the 32 and the 16 as well. So whichever way you figure this, and you could just type it in as 32 divided by 16 times 8. Um, but you are going to get um, 16 for that. So y would equal 16 um, for that. So... And again, it should seem like these are in proportion. Um, again, like in this case, you, and again, it doesn't always work out this easily. Um, so if you see some stuff here, then yeah, you prob you're probably right, because uh, the 16 is twice as much as the 8. So this side will be half as much, so 32 and 16, then 24 and 12. And like I said, though, it does not always work out that easily. So if you see that, you know, that's good but you're going to want to know how to set up these proportions so that you can solve it when the numbers don't work out uh, so nicely when you're going to get fractions and decimals and, and all that kind of stuff. So, All right, and then the last question for us here, uh, an example where the firefighters want to or need, you know, need to measure the height of the station flagpole. Um, they find that at the instant when the shadow of the station is 18 meters long, I'm just going to put an M there, that the shadow of the flagpole is 99 feet long. Uh, the station is 10 meters high. Find the height of the flagpole. Now, you may have noticed I was emphasizing the use of the units here. Typically, we don't want to mix units. However, when we're doing proportions, as long as these two units are the same, we're fine. And then our flagpole height, when we figure this out, will just be in feet. Um, so really not a problem for us here. Um, it would be a little bit more interesting if the shadow were 18 meters long and this were 10 feet tall, because then we're not using the same units there, and that would be an issue. But between the two units, um, we'll be fine. Again, I like to set up my proportion, where I have what I'm trying to find, in this case the x, put it over the number that it's with, the 99, and then uh, corresponding parts on the other side, so 10 over 18 here. Um, now with the 99, again, this would be a little more interesting. Again, might not be able to just look at this one and figure it out, or maybe you can. Um, but either way, what we would do is multiply both sides of the equation by 99. Those would cancel on that side and multiply this by 99 here. And however you want to figure this out, but x ends up equaling 55. So 55 foot tall flagpole. So thanks for watching. Hope you found that helpful.